let's set up the perfect tech stack for a SaaS product. We want to do as little initial work as possible and use some of the greatest solutions currently available to help us get started quickly and to scale when needed. This includes using managed cloud infrastructure so we don't have to worry about servers and using ready-made UI libraries so we don't have to design everything from scratch. In this video, I'll break down what I think is the perfect tech stack for a SaaS product and I'll explain what each of the components in this tech stack does. And then I'll show you how to set it up yourself, completely free of charge. Let's get started. So before we get into all the technical stuff, let me just make it clear that there's a whole lot of preference associated with the choices I'll present here. A part of why I find this tech stack perfect is simply down to the fact that my team and I have a lot of experience with it. As I've mentioned in other videos, starting a new business or a new SaaS is the worst occasion to learn something new. So if all of this is completely new to you, it might not be your perfect tech stack. That said, if you're thinking of creating a SaaS sometime in the future, or you're simply curious to learn a new approach, then you'll still get a ton out of this video. So follow along until the end and you'll have a fully fledged end to end SaaS boilerplate setup ready to start building today. Let's start by breaking down what this tech stack consists of. This tech stack is fully serverless. This means that we don't want to care about provisioning or managing servers. We use individual cloud functions to handle requests from the client and we use a managed database where we only pay for the number of read and write operations we perform. So we don't pay for servers running constant uptime and we don't need to care about the environment where the server code is executed. Patches, security updates, all of that. We just let our cloud provider handle it. But it gets even better. We're gonna be building our tech stack on AWS and we're gonna be using a tool called Pulumi to set up our infrastructure. Not only will we not manage servers, but we can set up an entire user login system with user authentication and a GraphQL API to query data. And we can let AWS and Pulumi do all the heavy lifting. As soon as you get familiar with these tools, you can set up an entire full stack application, including a secure login system in less than an hour. And if you reuse, some of the boilerplate code, that hour turns into 10 minutes instead. Stick around until the end of this video because I have a little surprise for you. So let's break down this tech stack piece by piece. Let's start with the back end. For the database, we'll be using DynamoDB. It's a managed database that uses a schemaless structure. This basically means that we can index our entries just as we would with a classical relational database, but we can still store entire documents in a single field. And besides providing a key, we don't have to define the entire schema, including all possible attributes in advance. This makes it super easy to simply get started and then extend the structure of our table as we go along. In order to fetch and serve data, we'll need an API. I'm a huge fan of GraphQL. So we're gonna use a service called AppSync, which is a managed GraphQL layer. Again, we don't need to run servers. We're simply gonna define a GraphQL schema and then tell AppSync how to map incoming requests to the data from the database. In order to securely sign into our application, we're gonna use Cognito. Handling user authentication is very complicated and I wouldn't recommend spending a second trying to set it up all on your own. Cognito manages all that for us and it happens to play very well with AppSync out of the box. And that's basically all we need to get started with the backend. Of course, as the SaaS begins to grow, some of this will start getting more complex, but really, this is all we need to get started. Let's take a look at the front end. We're gonna be building the front end in React. More specifically, we're gonna use Next.js. We're also gonna use a UI library to give us a lot of nice looking components to start out with. I'm a huge fan of Chakra UI, so we're gonna go with that one. To wire the front end together with the back end, we'll be using Amplify, which is a CLI tool provided by AWS. Amplify also has a hosting service that we'll use to host the app. Amplify is gonna help us out a lot, especially when authenticating users when they sign in to the app. Amplify also comes with some handy utilities to request data from our GraphQL API. 
though I prefer the Apollo client from Apollo GraphQL to do this instead. With a few lines of code, we can easily set up the Apollo client to perform GraphQL queries and still use Amplify to handle user authorization. And then we get to benefit from Apollo's inbuilt caching and awesome tooling. Finally, to make our lives so much easier, we're gonna use a tool called Pulumi to set up the infrastructure in the cloud. Since we're gonna be using GitHub to store the code, we're gonna set up continuous deployment using GitHub Actions. Oh, yeah, I almost forgot. We're gonna write the entire stack in TypeScript. One language, everywhere. So since we're gonna build this serverless and pay according to a fully cost per usage model, you may be worried about the price. But I can quickly say that following the way I set things up in this video will not result in sudden cost of hundreds of dollars. In fact, the price of all of this is negligible for the first long period. However, I do want to say that you can get $1,000 of free AWS credit to start out and in this way, this will become literally free. Check out my other video to see how you can get this free credit. All right, time to dig into some code. I'll show you how to set this up step by step. Though, I'll quickly say that this is not meant to be a tutorial per se, so I'm not gonna dwell on each line of code here. Instead, I'll go through the different elements and explain how they work. Stick around until the end of this video though, because I am gonna share a link to a repository with the final result all the boilerplate code. Using that repository, you can set up a full stack application in 10 minutes. I'm not even kidding. But please, don't skip ahead. Let me go through it first and then everything will make perfect sense when you see the code. All right, I'm gonna assume that you already have an AWS account and you have the AWS CLI configured on your local machine. If you haven't, I've put a link in the description that'll get you started. Let me start by going to pulumi.com and sign up for an account. I suggest simply using your GitHub account to sign in. Now, let's head over to Projects and create a new project. AWS and TypeScript will be selected by default, so we just click Next. We'll call this Serverless AWS React SaaS, and we'll use the region EU West 1. There we go, and Pulumi will basically tell us how to get started from here. So I'm gonna have everything put together in a mono repo, both the backend and front end. So I'll just go ahead and rename this folder backend. So the index.ts file is the entry point for Pulumi, but I would like to put things into a bit more structure. Let's start by deleting this. Then we create a folder called resources and Pulumi. And this is where we'll start. So let's start by setting up a DynamoDB table for our users. We'll keep a registry of users in a user pool, but I like to store a table in DynamoDB as well so we can add some extra information. So there we go. We're gonna simply export ID of the table here. See how incredibly easy it is to set up resources with Pulumi. Let's go back to the index.ts file and make sure to re-export the Dynamo ID here. So let's move on to set up AppSync. First, we need a GraphQL schema. So let's create a folder called schema and create a new file called schema.graphql. Inside this file, we will have the query type and we'll have a single field called getCognitoUser, which will resolve a user from our table. Now, inside the Pulumi folder, we create another file called appsync.ts and we set up the appsync resource just like we did with DynamoDB. We export the AppSync ID and the GraphQL endpoint back to index.ts and export these from here as well so they'll get included in the Pulumi setup. All right, now we need to set up a Lambda to resolve the GraphQL query. And for this, we need to set up a few things. First of all, let's create a file called iam.ts and set up some basic roles and policies. So let's create a file called source.ts and export a function that takes an AppSync ID as an argument. Now, we're gonna set up a Lambda function. We're gonna set up the data source for our AppSync layer and point that to the Lambda function. Finally, we're gonna create a resolver that tells AppSync to use this data source when this field in GraphQL is included in the request. There we go, all wired up nicely. 
Finally, we need to create a handler for the Lambda function, which includes the actual logic for the resolver. I'm using a few helper functions here for handling DynamoDB requests and Lambda responses, but I'll include these helpers in the repository. They are very convenient. All right, finally, let's go back to the appsync.ts file and make sure to invoke the function that takes the appsync ID and sets up the data source and resolver. This right here is Pulumi at work. I absolutely love working with their tool. And really, I didn't get paid to say any of this. It's not a sponsored video. I'm just really, really into the way they've carried this out. It's so clean and smooth. All right, the last thing we need to do is to set up Cognito. It includes an identity pool, a user pool, and a user pool client. These three components are essential for handling user authentication. And this is also where things get a little bit complex, so yeah, let's get to it. But first, let me just remind you how much it means when you give this video a like. It does take quite a lot of work putting a video together like this, so a simple click on that like button makes a world of difference. Thank you. So let's continue by setting up these last three resources. We'll start by defining the actual user pool. Here, we put a lot of the configurations for our user pool, like the password requirements and how users can recover their account and so on. And we do the same for the user pool client here. And we set up the identity pool. We configure this to use the user pool client we just defined, and we need to set up another role and a policy for users that are authenticated. If you're familiar with AWS, you probably already know what all of this means, and if not, it's not overly important to know the details here, but we're basically telling AWS which resources an authenticated user is allowed to access. And again, we export the user pool ID, the user pool client ID, and the identity pool ID from here. So that's it. The entire backend is now defined, and all we need to do now is run the magic command, pollumi up, which will take care of setting up all of this in the cloud. Let's do it. Should we just uh, delete this one and just do it, do it all over? Yeah, yeah. Let's do it again. Do it again, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes, there it was. Everything is now set up and in the first try. Let's just quickly jump into the AWS console and verify. Yes, the table is here, and the user pool and AppSync with our schema. Awesome, all set up and ready to roll. Like seriously, isn't it cool having all this set up already and just hitting Pulumi up every time you need to spin up a new project? All right, let's move on to the front end. When Pulumi finished deploying everything, it spit out an output. Let's just save that. Great, let's set up a new Next.js project with TypeScript. Let's install Chakra, Polo, AWS Amplify, and a few other things. Inside the front end folder, we're gonna create a folder called deployment. In that, we're gonna create a file called amplifiedconfig.ts. Now, we're gonna use Amplify to connect the front end to the back end, so let's just add some configuration here. And we're gonna be using the IDs and endpoints that Pulumi outputted just before. So, let's go to the pages folder and find the app.tsx file. In here, we're gonna add Amplify Configure to the top, and we're gonna use the file we just created. Now, let's set up Amplify using the Amplify CLI. We're gonna go Amplify init, and we're gonna go through the steps it's asking for here. For most of these, we can just use the default settings. Now, this is super cool. Amplify will now generate all the queries, mutations, and even TypeScript types based on the GraphQL schema we created for the backend. In this way, everything is constantly kept in sync. Awesome. Let's start building the app. So we need four pages to begin with. We need a sign-in page, we need a sign-up page, and we need a confirmation page where users can apply the confirmation code that is sent by email. And finally, the home page, which is where users will be directed once signed in. So I'm lazy by nature. And since we're using Chakra UI, let's just head over to chakratemplates.dev where they have all these amazing ready-made templates based on Chakra UI. This is probably a good time to give a shout out to all these amazing people right here. 
so cool that you actually took time to build all these and to open source it for the rest of us to use for free. I mean, that's amazing. So let's head over to authentication under forms and let's put together these pages real quick. Awesome. And now that we have these forms ready, we're simply gonna use the auth module from Amplify to authenticate. You see how ridiculously easy that was? We don't want to bother dealing with complex login flows. We're just gonna have Amplify and Cognito take care of all of that. So the last little tweak we're gonna have to make is to set up the Apollo client with Amplify so that we can use it to make GraphQL queries. The way we do this is to use Apollo link to create a custom fetch function for the Apollo client to use, which basically intercepts the fetch call, then passes the JWT token to the GraphQL endpoint we set up using AppSync. I've included this helper function in the repository that I'll be sharing with you in a moment. Let's run npm run dev and see how this works. All right, so the page is up. I'll start by signing up here. Now an email was sent with a confirmation code. Mm -hmm, there it was. And I can now sign in. And there we go, it works. Isn't it just so cool? And from here, we start building the actual app. We can easily add more GraphQL fields, more types, set up more resolvers using Pulumi and have Amplify automatically generate types and yeah, everything just works with a minimal of effort. Isn't that just amazing? So there are a few things here that I skipped over a bit fast, but don't worry. Just go to github.com slash Simon Harburg slash SAS template and you will find all the code I just wrote, including some really convenient helpers and utilities. There's also a guide to get started. And if you have just a minimum experience with AWS already, you can get this whole stack up and running in less than an hour. When I tried it after having finished it all, it took me less than 10 minutes to have the app running from a clean slate. I use this template myself, so it's tried and tested, so to speak. And if you find it valuable that I'm sharing this video and the code with you, please do me the honor and give this video a like and give the repository a star on GitHub. If you get stuck with anything, you're welcome to hit me up on Twitter. The link is in the description below. Also, Pulumi has a lot of these starters on their own GitHub repository, so be sure to check that out as well. Again, link in the description. So, this video was quite technical. In other videos, I talk more about marketing, finances, and generally how to run a tech business online. So if you're into this topic and you want to learn how to get started yourself, check out some of my other videos and subscribe to my channel so you won't miss out on upcoming videos. That's all I got. Now, go and build some incredible SaaS products using this template and I will see you soon for another video.